morning. Everyone is here who wants to be on the streaming talk? Last one check, it's a streaming with Kafka. There's a couple other streaming talks in the same time. You can go to any talk and it'll be streaming talk. Yes, but uh, you can uh, run, but you can't hide. So let me start. Um, let me start recording here as well. I probably won't, so because there are so many people already recording. Yep. Already. Yes, uh, for those of you who don't know me from yesterday, I'm the same guy who did the Kafka talk yesterday. I'm still solutions architect, still developer advocate uh, with the Confluent company who's behind the Kafka and uh, all sorts of streaming things in this world. Uh, I'm still in the Twitter at Gamusa, so you can go to follow me. If you didn't follow me yesterday, you can have a chance to follow me today. Um, yes, <laughs> last day of promotion. Yes, I'm a very interesting person. Right. So yesterday, uh, I got the introduction to the Kafka as a streaming platform. Now, you know that we can push the bytes back and forward using Kafka. It's safe, it's a fault tolerant, it's scalable, it's amazing, it's, it has a unicorns and rainbow. Now you can say, okay, Victor, it's nice, but what I can do with this data? So this talk today about how you're gonna be processing this data. And since uh, this is the developers and uh, more like a Java-oriented developers, I'm gonna be focusing on the, some of the Java goodies. Plus, if you're not Java developers, it's still cool that I will have some of this at the very end for you as well. Now, quick reminder from, uh, from yesterday's uh, presentation. Now, we have the Kafka that allows us to distribute data between multiple components of your of your of your system or of your organization, etc. So um, now we need to think. Okay, so we got this data. Now what? Can we do the processing? How are we going to be doing the things uh, where some of the events arrived with the later? How we can do like real time running um, average, for example. Do I, we need to write ourselves or we do need to run another cluster as we did in the cluster days with Hadoop? Actually, it's a good question. So let me see what we're gonna be focusing today. So what is the stream processing? Essentially, you have multiple streams of data. You have some sort of uh, device, software piece, framework, call it uh, as you want, that will produce ultimate results. Right, it's gonna be either stream or some sort of answer. 42 is the answer of like every, every uh, question in this world. So what we're gonna be doing this? Uh, quick story about uh, string processing within, with Kafka. So Kafka itself uh, was open sourced and the company was founded and there was some bunch of interesting things were added to the platform, namely uh, the, the Connect API. Um, I talked about Connect yesterday and, it, and I showed you that Connect is the way how you bring the data if you don't want to write any custom code. You have some existing system, you need to move data to Kafka using Connect Connector. Naming is hard, I understand, but Connect Connector that allows you to bring data into Kafka or if you want to move data out. Now, so in the, in the middle of 2016, the first version of the Kafka streams, Kafka stream processing API was introduced. It's a part of the Apache Kafka framework. Um, and uh, the reason or necessity for this kind of framework came from the realization, okay, so we, we can move the bytes, it, it's good, uh, but we need to do what? We need to run another cluster. We need to run Hadoop, we need to run Spark, we need to run whatever cluster to do this. Do we really want this? But we are developers. How many developers here? How many operations guys? All right, cool. <laughs> so I'm in the right place. So developers want to write apps, don't want to uh, set up infrastructure, right? Even though these days developers need to understand infrastructure. Infrastructure is the code and all these uh, DevOps practices um, needs to be implemented by developers and developers need to also participate in production support, things like that. Developers still like to write apps. So, and uh, for these applications, we want them to be uh, obviously scalable, we want to be elastically scalable, meaning that scalable, you want to increase, just to spin up another instances of the application so you can able to uh, scale, um, handle the load. 
or you want to be elastically scalable so you can go scale up, scale down in terms of saving money for your company. When it's uh, the Black Friday, you spending a uh, company's money by buying more infrastructure to scale out your processing. When it's just a regular day and it's slow, you can scale down because not so many people um, buying things and uh, you know, you, you're not processing the streams in the, these kind of uh, volumes. Now, uh, fault tolerance. Uh, this is important because, you know, app applications or code has the bugs, things break, not necessarily your code because you developers, you write awesome code, but infrastructure might have a bugs, right? Like network glitches. There's some mad guy with the axe will uh, the destroy your data center for some reasons. Um, I don't know. And uh, this something might happen and your applications need to have these capabilities to survive these situations, right? Um, Interesting thing that um, when in the world of uh, like microservices containers, people will show you awesome, nice, uh, stateless application that runs in scale up, scale down. But actually writing stateful application, this is what we do. We need to store states somewhere. We need to have um, some sort of like persistent storage for our data that, we, um, that we're processing in our application and we need to read it from somewhere and write it somewhere, right? So state is important and the uh, framework that we're gonna be talking today supports uh, stateful stuff. So for example, if you do simple transformation, you don't need to have a state. So you're getting some bytes, you're getting some object, you're parsing some JSON, you're transforming this into another JSON. You don't need to store the state here, right? So it's easy. But sometimes when you do, um, when you're doing a calculation, you do running uh, totals, running averages, things like that, you need to accumulate the results to, uh, to produce. So you need to have a state somewhere. <clears throat> And um, distributed is fun. Writing distributed systems and writing distributed applications is, is a lot of fun. Uh, how many of you guys are reading uh, regularly some of the papers on distributed systems? Uh, which is fun, right? And uh, lots of uh, fun theory. But in practice, it's not so much fun, right? You need to deal with some low-level things to take care of, again, scalability, uh, elasticity, fault tolerance. This kind of things need to be built in. And uh, so this is why distributed systems are, um, are hard even though they're still fun. So um, very important uh, thing to mo mention here, if you're writing distributed systems for tasks that not require distributed systems, please don't. Like if you do like a word count, you can use a word count utility that Unix, every Linux uh, uh, distribution has it. You don't need to run word count in distributed, in distributed fashion. Though some of the tasks, they will benefit from distributed, uh, distributed nature or distributed, sys uh, distributed implementation, Though it's not necessarily. Okay, now, couple things. Do we want this? Our apps will have these capabilities. I don't hear you. Okay, okay. I just, I just want to make sure that, like, I'm not only one person who has, who has these requirements for, for his apps. All right. Now, next question. You're not, uh, you're not engineers, so you don't have any, uh, do you have any words here? So only engineers, app developers, operations, not marketing guys. All right, so the where I put my computing, where is it my computing? Like where I put my computer, I run cluster and I run my code there and the code will be serialized, um, sent it to this computing cluster, deserialized, distributed, and magically you will be running at scale, right? Or another option. Serverless, no computers. No computers. <laughs> or another option, your app is your computation, you, again, you're writing apps, you're not writing infrastructure, you're not writing clusters. Um, and where do I store my, my, uh, my state? Do I need to bring another database in this? Okay, so I have a Kafka now, I have a cluster of Hadoop, now I need to, for each application, I need to have my own database, uh, or do I? Um, or <laughs> most importantly, like how I run my code. Again, when the situation, if you ever run this in, in, in Spark or, or Hadoop, your code is somewhere. Or like my colleague here, Baruch Sain, uh, my friend, he's not my colleague because I'm a technical person, he's not. Um, <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, the, there's no servers, there's no computers. Where's my code? Where's my code running? It's somewhere in the cloud, but cloud is someone else's computer, right? Okay. And uh, next, uh, next, uh, whatever minutes we have uh, for, uh, for this talk, I'm gonna be focusing on the Java framework that's called Kafka Streams, which is Java API that allows you to write application that would be scalable, full tolerant, allow uh, to elastically scale in and scale out, support storing the state, 
um, and uh, support um, a, all sorts of awesome things. Now, I got the, this question yesterday. So I, uh, it's um, during, the, during, during the Kafka talk. So like how I would do, um, how I collocate my processing. Do I need to put this uh, processing on the broker nodes and uh, run this there? No, you don't. Nothing is happening on the broker side. Broker side is sole responsibility to make sure that your data is safe, so data is secured, and you can distribute, your data, distribute this data across uh, different applications. You're not running processing on the Kafka cluster. It's busy enough to uh, preserve uh, this consistency and uh, support this like fault tolerance, blah, 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 all these uh, awesome things. You not run anything uh, on, um, on the broker. So in this, in this case, uh, the question of where is my code is kind of like self-explanatory. So this is Kafka. So this is our Kafka. This is our application. And you see there's a clear boundary here. So we're not, we're not running anything here. We're not running anything on, on the broker side. We're running somewhere else. Where is it? We can run this uh, wherever we want because it's a Java application. We can run this as a jar. We can run this as a war if we deploy in, in the uh, application servers. Or that's it. <laughs> I can run it on my laptop from IDE um, or as, as a bunch of files, right? But typically, or you can pack everything into containers. These containers are awesome, right? How many of you guys are using containers these days? That's cool because developers need to do and needs to think about uh, production as well, and they need to provide this contract. So you can put your application inside the container. So there's no there's no necessity to, or there's no essential uh, need for something special. It's a simple Java, simple Java application. Plus, you can run the simple uh, same application in many instances, uh, and these instances will have the coordination between them. So you will, they will not uh, do the same job that other instances do, right? So in this case, these, uh, these applications, they will, be, um, they will have a scalability of the box. And the Kafka Streams has this, because Kafka Streams framework built on top of the concept of uh, consumers, which is, uh, and consumer groups. So for those of you who didn't, uh, who didn't see uh, my talk yesterday, so I was talking about the consumer groups. The consumer groups is a very important uh, concept that uh, available in Kafka. It allows you to create multiple consumers, group them in one, um, group them in one group, and allow to scale computation from the topic. For example, you have uh, 10 partitions per topic, and you can have one, for starters, one consumer and consumer group, meaning that all data from 10 partitions will end up in one uh, consumer. But if you start another instance of the consumer, your load will be split between two. So in this case, consumer one will have five partitions, and consumer two will have another five partitions, and so far and so on, right? Um, and this concept is also uh, inherited and, um, um, and used extensively in the Kafka streams. So traditionally, uh, when we're running on the different type of systems, I, I was, um, in this you know, world before uh, we were doing some clustering software. Um, and uh, we were running code inside the clusters, and we send the code over the wire and the run there. So to support this, there's running cluster. There's some shared database for shared state. Um, and or not necessarily the shared database needs to be outside. Some of the systems support some sort of like internal, um, some distributed uh, storage that's available for all instances for your application. But now, this is pretty much it. So only one storage that you essentially need this is Kafka. So Kafka, apart from the being a very popular messaging platform or streaming platform, also provide them with storage capabilities. So these capabilities are used in Kafka streams to do whatever is required uh, to do in this, um, this application, okay? So essentially, you can deploy any topology deploy it everywhere, and you're going to be extremely happy of, of doing this because API, you're pretty much familiar with the API. Kafka Streams API, well, I will show it in a couple minutes, um, inherently looks like Java 8 API. How many of you guys are using Java 8 here? Java 9? 
All right, Java 10? <laughs> nope. All right, OK. Java 7? OK, interesting. Uh, so what, what's the rest of the people using? Um, <laughs> no GS. All right. So yeah, runs everywhere. Hello, Java. Uh, write once, uh, runs everywhere. But if you package this in Docker, it literally runs everywhere. Um, clustering is handled and it's based on the protocol how the consumers uh, interact uh, with the Kafka broker. So in this case, your applications don't need to interact to each other. So again, we're not building cluster of your applications. However, clustering is important and the Kafka would be used uh, and the Kafka uh, consumer uh, coordination protocol will be used to coordinate uh, instances of your clustered application. Uh, so with the uh, with the introduction of the exact one pro exactly one processing in Kafka in uh, version uh, 0.11, uh, many other frameworks, namely the producer and consumer, the standard Java API, and the Kafka streams, uh, they support exactly one processing. And for you as a developer. Um, you don't actually need to do anything, and not pretty much, because it's built in on framework. So framework handles this uh, when you're specifying that you're going to be using idempotent producer um, and uh, exactly once uh, config in uh, Kafka streams. You will get this out of the box. Um, there actually, there's plenty of uh, uh, talks from the Kafka Summit last year that explains how it's done in, in general, if you're interested in go deeper in this topic, or uh, how it's done in the Kafka streams. It was done in the uh, Kafka Summit in San Francisco. Now, event time processing. So the concept of time is, is, is very important for, for stream processing applications because so some of the events might um, depend on the time of when this event happened, or when this event actually processed. So there's different semantics that uh, the people want to use in when they, you know, processing this data. So the Kafka streams uh, supports uh, event uh, time processing and um, event, uh, you know, injection. So there's a different, um, different uh, semantics. So for example, if it, I'll give you an example, um, Star Wars. How many of you guys have seen Star Wars? Come on, Star Wars. Who likes uh, the, f f the classic more than the, the episode one and three? All right. What about new one? Okay, okay. We have a mixed, let, let, let's call it the, the mixed, uh, mixed reviews, right? Um, so essentially, you know that time-wise, like in the like real life, in our life, yeah, so we have episode four, episode five, episode six. So, and after that, we have episode one, episode two, episode three, and after that, episode seven and eight. So, the, from perspective of uh, processing time, this is how it happened. But from perspective of event time, it goes into episode one, episode two, episode three. But essentially, if you do this in machete order, episode one doesn't exist. Anyone in machete order of Star Wars? Okay, I, I find my people. Okay, cool. All right. So essentially, guys, the important thing from this talk, you just need to go and uh, look for uh, the machete order of Star Wars, and you will understand that um, the episode one doesn't exist. So, oh, really? Nice. I need to I need to see it. Maybe episode uh, eight doesn't exist as well. It's terrible. Um, okay. Um, so interesting thing about state. So um, usually where we store the state, we store the state in some sort of database. We can use uh, some external database that uh, some other infrastructure guys run us, or like we do in our like shadow IT and running our own uh, database also in, in containers or, or whatnot. But, or maybe we use some of the embedded databases. So the Kafka Stream Framework also has a built-in database to store a state of the processing. And uh, this, uh, the, the, this is, uh, database is actually will, you know, will survive the failures. So when your application failed um, and restarted, um, state would be restored from this local database. So we use uh, the database called RocksDB. It provides uh, disk persistence and provides some of the in-memory capabilities. It's written as C++, but it has uh, good compatibility with Java. So Kafka Streams uses RocksDB for internal state. Kafka Streams has 
this awesome capability to expose this state store outside of the of the you know the processing of application. So essentially, you can turn your application that you know consumes the streams and runs this uh, kind of some sort of running overage into a key value store. So there's a concept of uh, interactive queries that are available in the Kafka streams that allow you to expose, and after that you can expose it through the REST API or expose through any RPC type of uh, thing, um, and uh, basically query state of the application directly rather than um, publishing this into uh, another Kafka topic, for example. Okay. Now, uh, and uh, to support um, different semantics of dealing with infinite stream of data, um, the, the, the Kafka streams supports a concept of uh, joins, windows, and aggregations. So I got the question yesterday, can we do joins? Of course you can. So you can have a stream of data that can be joined with another, um, we, call it, we call it table, that uh, will produce some other stream of data. <coughs> um, and it, it <laughs> so when you run the cluster, you need to, when you run some cluster, you need to properly estimate sizing because uh, your operations guys will ask you, okay, so what kind of cluster you want to have? Um, and you are like, okay, so maybe today we're going to be running a couple megabytes of the payload or like a couple hundred of messages. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a couple thousand. Day after tomorrow we're going to be a be very successful startup and we're going to be scaling and we're going to be running uh, millions of messages, right? And But from day one, <laughs> typical developers are, incredibly terrible on estimating things, right? And this is why, like, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult. Um, but the Kafka streams it doesn't require you to do make decision right away. So you can start small and after that grow. And uh, you don't need to kind of depend somehow on uh, uh, the growing uh, infrastructure of Kafka, for example. It can, it can be scaled separately. All right. So API concepts. So first one is stream. So stream is a sequence, is ordered sequence of some facts. These facts are immutable and they come from the distributed transaction log named, named distributed transaction log. When, okay, so let's, let's play this. So I, you say Kafka when I say distributed transaction log, okay? I said distributed transaction log, nice. <laughs> okay, let's try again. He's, he's not impressed. Okay, let's do it. A distributed transaction log. Exactly. So the Kafka is the main source for Kafka streams. So the stream is a concept and API available to you as a developer and uh, to operate. And, uh, but essentially, physically, it's going to be Kafka topic. So Kafka topic would feed the stream. And uh, stream will uh, deal with the messages one at a time and uh, we will do the processing. Tables are everywhere. You say, hey, Victor, how tables are here? Uh, how it's possible? We're talking about streams, we're talking about data, but tables, isn't it like uh, from database world? So interesting enough that um, some people call it special theory. I, I, like, I like this idea from, um, from a guy from the Google. He did this uh, uh, the Apache Beam talk, and he said that uh, um, special theory of stream and tables relativity. So streams are table, they, uh, there's a kind of concept of duality streams and tables. So essentially you can, turn your, um, you can turn your stream into the table by coalescing based on the key. So essentially this happens every day when you're using uh, any sorts of database, uh, regular, regular uh, re re relational uh, database systems where you have this uh, uh, transactional log and your database system will materialize it into the tables, views, and et cetera, right? But essentially log is um, primary thing here. So, and the, the database will be constantly updating. So you're doing things like insert, it will generate new entry inside the log, but it will constantly update your, your view. And uh, vice versa. You can extract this data from the table and capture this as a series of change data capture events, so turn database into the stream, right? So this is why um, the tables and uh, databases are <laughs> related. Using streams, you can do transformation of the tables. You can transform table into the stream. Um, in, uh, augment this stream, uh, enrich this stream with some data, and turn it into the different one. 
So the same, this is very, actually a very powerful concept and I actually found um, implementation in the Kafka streams. So the concept of the table is also backed by Kafka topic, but special type of Kafka topic called compacted topic. So compacted topic does exactly as, um, as I just displayed. It basically takes the value for keys and keeps only the latest and greatest. So there's special process that will be responsible of cleaning this up and make sure that there's only a latest and greatest state. So compacted topic is very important uh, concept and uh, for for tables. Or example of the Richmond, how you can join stream of data with um, with table or data. So you have a, a stream of transactions that some of their users were doing. Now you want to um, provide some of the more data. And inside the table that you have in your uh, compacted topic, you might have um, user IDs. So you can join by user ID, and then now you have a transaction uh, a stream of rich transactions, which have user ID information about user um, address, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they uh, can be transformed. Uh, so from perspective of Java API, Victor, show us the code. Did someone say Victor, show us the code? Uh. No. Did I hear someone say, Victor, show us the code? Nice. Okay. So the code. So let's do actually, you know, yeah, let's do actual code, right? Talk is cheap. Um, as we know. Okay. All right. Can you guys see my... Whoa. 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 Guys, uh, camera, that yeah, camera people. No, I don't want to, you know, people faint in uh, some seizures because of this blinking screen. Okay, let me see. Uh, plug-in and plug-back. Yes, this is exactly what I do. Oh, yep, a winning. Yes, all right. So, so in my case, in my case, in this particular scenario, it's a Java application. And the way how I can prove it's a Java application, I do have a build script. I do have a, a, a Gradle script. All, 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 I have a, where is it? Maven script. But actually not using Maven here. I just use the Maven to generate my, uh, the Avro stuff. But I use Gradle because it's awesome. Um, so, and this is just a Java application. Set a, just a bunch of dependencies here. So, and as you can see here, there is a, um, where is it? Yay. Kafka Streams. Okay, so we have, okay, like this. So Kafka Streams. So Kafka Streams is your Java library. It comes with uh, all sorts of nice things. You don't need to install this RocksDB for yourself, right? So RocksDB comes with Kafka Streams. And uh, to, to, to use this stuff, um, I need to write some code. And another indication that I'm actually writing Java application is the public static void main, right? So in my public static void main, I do have um, um, sort of like a setup that allows my Kafka stream to work. So namely, um, I need to provide like sort of connection properties, blah, 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 and things like that. Most important thing here is that um, I'm running um, against Kafka, and the Kafka is running on my, on my computer. Let's see if it actually does. Um, Okay, so where's my, okay, my. Yeah, my guy here. All right, so um, do, 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 do. let's see if I do have anything in my, um, in my Kafka. Let me kill this one and uh, let's do this and I will do something like this. Um, Yes, so I do run Kafka, and there's some topics that are available here. So before, uh, before we started, uh, I actually placed something. So in this demo, essentially, I have some raw data that I received from some open movie database uh, on the internet. And uh, it's, you know, it's a total mess. It's, a, it's almost in unreadable format. Um, it doesn't uh, have um, our, fa you know, things that we like to do. Like, there's no classes. You know, this is how it looks like. And how many of you guys seen something like that in your real life? How many of you guys work in the banking industry here? Like, how many of you guys see like this uh, CVS files, like uh, co 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 CSV files, right? Common separated files. Pretty much same here. Um, 
some weird stuff. And I also received a, um, the data that contains ratings. Even worse, because it doesn't have anything to do with my movies right here. So it's just some IDs and uh, some of the votes for individual person, right? So in, in, this, uh, in this demo um, that uh, you can see, I'm trying to use streaming approach for solving the problem of creating uh, ratings uh, of my data. So for, again, for simplicity, data is already pretty populated there. I just simply push these files with awesome uh, in the extremely useful command uh, called uh, the consume, uh, console producer. So console producer allows me just simply to, to, to pipe it uh, stuff in it with the standard, I don't think there's a, there's a cart, uh, curtain that's on the top. Yes, so basically what I do, I just uh, stream uh, movies into, um, into my topic. Now, so my data is there. So let's see how we're gonna be processing this. Um, no, let me run this first. And uh, to run this, I'm gonna show you, where is it, uh, my console. In my console, why it's switching here? Okay. So um, there's another very awesome command that allows me to do is uh, is. Um, so my console consumer will listen to this topic. So. Um, I do have topics that have data that was ingested into Kafka. I will use some of the topics in Kafka as intermediate, and I will use Kafka topic as a result uh, of my computation. So essentially, I'm not using any external databases and other things. Everything stores in the Kafka. All things Kafka, and uh, this is what, what, um, what we're gonna be doing here. Um, to run this, uh, so what we do in Java, we do run this from ID, right? So who needs this? Um, and uh, what happens if I will switch to my console consumer, my topic that uh, was supposed to uh, collect data about, where is it, where is it? Kind of like data about the ratings, just received a result. Pretty simple. Um, let's see how it did this. So it did this this way. So first of all, we're defining some of the structure for our data. In this particular case, I use Avro, which is a um, pretty neat Java framework that allows me to do all sorts of things. For example, generating um, Java classes for Avro schema definition. So in this particular case, I can show you my Avro stuff. I do have this is how it looks like. It looks like a JSON. You're writing uh, your definition of your object in uh, a JSON-like format, and after that, some tool will generate this for you. The cool thing is not that you're writing in a JSON format rather than writing in a Java class. The cool thing is that this tooling supports schema evolution, meaning that if I need to add uh, more properties and uh, I need to uh, support backward compatibility with my binary payload where this result would be serialized, Avro gives me out of the box. So I can mark some of the things fields that are backward compatible. If I remove some of the fields and uh, add some new fields, it will not affect uh, uh, you know, both sides because Avro has a schema for reading and Avro has a schema for writing. So um, in terms of binary payload, you will not, um, if you not, don't have any field, you will not break other code. You will just not get this value, et cetera. Um, another, another interesting thing is that um, I, um, Avro has a better, um, better size than traditional Java serializable, for example. Now, so the way how it looks like, I'm defining um, some of my, um, some of the topics that will be behave as my source. So in this case, I have this uh, raw ratings. Raw ratings, it's my uh, Kafka topic. I, I creating a stream from Kafka topics, uh, topic raw ratings. After that, um, I'm doing set of transformation for this data. For example, I'm, as you can see, every line would contain some, some stuff, right? Some text. I need to some, make some sense of it. And since I'm a Java developer, I want to make sure that I will be able to parse it and create some Java, um, some Java object from it. So in this particular case, I just use the parser that you know, knows how to read this weird format and turns it into actual object. In this case, it's a rating object. 
Now, and uh, um, for those of you who use the Java Util streams, um, this API should be look very familiar. It has um, a couple um, opinionated versions. For example, Kafka uh, Java Util streams don't have like separated map values. It's just simple map um, because stream essentially is um, key value. Um, it's, it's a fact that has a key and has a value. It might be like empty key or empty value, but this is what you, what you have when you're talking about stream. Because from, from yesterday, so some of you remember, stream comes from the Kafka topic, and the Kafka topic usually uh, might have value with key and value. Now, so we did this, we did some transformation, we will parse it. So what we're gonna do with this data after? So there is a two options. So we can generate an intermediate object in this case, so we can table, in this case we just do count by, um, um, uh, by some, some group stuff. So we receive this rating, we need to group it by uh, movie ID, and after that we can do count and uh, uh, save this result somewhere. To save this result somewhere, for example, overage rating, we're saving this inside, inside distributed transaction log. Distributed transaction log. Awesome. So we're saving this uh, overage rating in special topic called uh, ratings overage. So in this case, um, because we went from perspective of key table, right? So we went from the stream, case stream, into the key table and this key table would be materialized as a compacted topic inside the Kafka. Meaning that you essentially interested in two things. You're interested in movie ID and average rating, right? You don't in, you're not interested in the, in the history, how this average rating was calculated. So this is why concept of the key table came um, very handy. Now, now the, the most, most exciting thing, and I, I think like most of the people came here to, to learn how to do join of streams, right? Because this is what people do. People love to do joins in databases. People love to do the joins in some distributed uh, in memory storages. Now, now it's time to do this in Kafka. So uh, in, um, in this particular case, we have a stream of rating averages, and we have a stream of movies. So we have this movie. Um, we also need to parse the movies. We need to extract the uh, movie ID from the value and generate another stream. After that, we're doing a join. So we join by movie ID, and our result, uh, our result will contain a movie ID, um, and uh, the uh, will contain rating and movie, I guess, like, like this, because we're going to be uh, transforming this into this uh, stream that will contain rated movies. So in this case, it's kind of vice versa. Now, as a result, we will get um, title and overage rating that would be uh, published inside the, uh, the Kafka topic. Cool? No? No? No or yes, cool it or not. So let me know, you guys, work with me. Give me some feedback. Yes, okay, not cool. All right, so there was not, not something, uh, not many people were impressed with this, right? So let me um, uh, carry on with my own stuff and don't pay attention for this uh, uh, people who are always whining. Um, so we went through, the, exactly. Now, so last, uh, last thing, oh shoot, how this happened? Let me see, let me see. Okay, so the uh, presenting on multiple screens is hard. Let me see if I can fix it real quick. Okay, now you see my, my PowerPoint. Oh my gosh, this is, this is so ridiculous. Okay, I need to move my mouse into another screen. Okay, yeah, we will, we'll do that. Uh, Yes, 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 no, oh, yeah, okay. Sweet, okay, so last couple of minutes. Now, for those of you who don't want to write the Java and don't get too excited about writing Java code, there is very cool stuff. So the KSQL is actually uh, implementation of um, SQL engine for your Kafka applications. So, so we thought this um, concept that you have in Unix uh, familiar when you can, you know, write the data back and forth between different uh, uh, different systems using pipes. We will already talk about this a little bit uh, when we talk about Connect. Now you learn a little bit about Kafka streams, and the Kafka is your basically pipe. All right. So this is how your uh, KSQL looks like. 
Isn't it nice? So instead of writing this like uh, lines of code of Java for people who don't like uh, writing code of Java and not get excited about this, you're just writing thing that you're doing this from where? From the, from the computer science school. Because what they do is they teach you about some database and SQL. Now, and this looks like awful like regular SQL that you did in 1992. Um, so essentially, but this is SQL, this is, uh, this is a continuous query. So this result would be constantly updated as new information will arrive. So for example, the, those people who use SQL 1982, they're still using Microsoft um, Internet Explorer 6. So we need to detect when, when they come into our website. So we have a click stream of the things that they do on our website and we're capturing the user agent. So we can uh, very quickly look in the stream of data and make sense of it and find this awesome two people uh, from 1992. All right, another option is that we're trying to do things like enriching a stream. So we take a, um, um, a stream of some credit card transactions and we produce another stream where we have credit card transactions of our, our Platinum users, right? So we can do join without writing join in Java, but writing join in SQL. Um, we can do windowing operation. I didn't show you any windows, uh, windowing operation in, uh, in the case SQL because, uh, because of the time constraints. However, you still can do the same stuff in the case SQL. So you're running your um, continuous query with a certain time, tumble windows. So in this particular case, it's kind of like a detection of some malicious operations. So for example, someone is doing something and uh, that not permitted to do too often. So this way, how you can get this information and the signal to some of the system that will block it for doing this. Um, um, so in this particular case, when the person is trying to swipe the credit card like in the multiple different locations, but within five seconds, maybe something fishy is going on there. Now, uh, real-time monitoring for some IoT devices, some IoT use cases. Kafka is used as the, uh, is the, is the data distribution platform for, for IoT use cases. And the case SQL is a tool to, um, to explore this data without writing complex application and things like that. Um, case SQL supports uh, schema inference. So from your data, for example, if it's a JSON data, we can extract the schema and uh, um, when we're specifying like a value format, the JSON, and uh, the stream would be created in the certain format. Certain fields of the stream will be inferred from your uh, JSON object. Same thing works for Avro. Um, uh, the the KSQL will interact with schema register to store schema there and store bytes in Kafka. And when it's required, the schema will be pulled from the schema registry and will be used for the processing. I see many questions, how, 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 how soon we get GDBC drivers so we can plug our own um, uh, existing applications or some vendor applications to do uh, some ad hoc queries with, uh, uh, with Tableau, for example. Um, <laughs> no. So you don't. Um, essentially, someone actually trying to do. There is some community project. Some guys start, start doing this key SQL driver, uh, JDBC driver for key SQL. It's going to be interesting. But essentially, these tools are lack of um, supporting st streamable uh, data structures. So they don't understand um, because they 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 inherently working with the data at rest, with batch data, like uh, tables. Your data already here, so you're not. You, you're not updating this result constantly. Um, okay, so I will switch that. Some trade-offs. So you learn from the yesterday. You learn consumer and producer. A little bit. We talk about, about this very low level. Every framework that uses Kafka will be based on consumer and producer. If you want to do your own framework that does something with Kafka, consumer and producer will give you all possible flexibility. Now, you Java developer, you want to focus on streaming, uh, streaming semantics. You don't want to invent your windowing. You don't want to invent ways how to join. You don't want to invent how to do local state and things like that. You use Kafka streams. Um, and it will give you very rich Java API and you Java developers, you enjoy writing and it's amazing. Now, you still want to do stream processing, but you don't want to um, invest in learning new framework. You don't want to um, do invest in your developers who are going to be learning new framework. But you just want to see what's in your data, or you want to explore. You just, you know, tipping your toes in some of the Kafka use cases that your organization is running. Pretty sure, check with your organization some of the pieces of your organization running Kafka. And if you want to kind of uh, jump into the streaming band, uh, bandwagon, you can start your KSQL server and start looking into this data without writing a line of code, because KSQL can be run as a um, 
as an external, external application um, within your Java process. Or it can be run in distributed fashion. You can run this key SQL server and you have a local key SQL CLI that allows you to type in there. Or there's even don't need to type anything because in, in SQL Plus we can just uh, supply some of the SQL code there, right? And the same thing we can do with KSQL. Now, pretty awesome demo. So it has everything. <laughs> Any SNL fans here? Specifically Bill Hader's fans? It has everything? Okay. Okay, not my people here. All right, so the case, uh, CP demo is actually pretty cool. It, um, did you know that Wikipedia has a public IRC channel where all changes where the people doing around the world in Wikipedia will be, uh, um, will be written in this IRC channel? So we have a connector that listens this IRC channel and push these changes to distributed transaction log. And after that, we have uh, some streaming application that use key SQL or it use Kafka streams. It depends uh, what's your preference here. And you can look on this demo. It's pretty awesome. It doesn't require from you. Just only thing what you need to do is just do git clone and after that uh, run Docker. It, it's Dockerized and stuff like that. Um, and we have an awesome community channel in our uh, awesome community Slack. So if you're not there, this is place to be. Um, so. You need to, three things to me. Uh, you need to Google for machine to order and you need to Google machine to order uh, part two. You need to Google, uh, you need to get this demo and you need to join our Slack uh, 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 community channel. Oh no, you need to follow me on Twitter and after that join a Slack uh, community. Um, remember, we're writing apps, not infrastructure. Um, we, we love the right code and uh, this is how these things should, should move forward. We're hiring. There's also an opportunity to join the team and to take a selfies with me. Or you can, well, if you want, you can take a selfie right now. Um, and uh, thanks for your time. This is my uh, contact information. If you have any questions after this presentation, uh, obviously the, the videos will be published somewhere. Um, I will be hanging out here. Unfortunately, I don't want, I cannot no, take this. Here, no, no, no I, I cannot take the questions because we have an awesome Java puzzler stock. You can actually can uh, gather around and we can go to the Java puzzler stock together and I will be answering the questions on Kafka streams along the road. So thanks for your time. And uh, I really enjoyed this uh, you know, talk. I hope you do as well. Uh, otherwise, it would be weird. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I will see you in the Java puzzler stock.